Bull in a China Shop TV, not just a YouTube channel, your main source for bull breed entertainment. I offer video services such as stud features, kennel features, and full event coverage. I also offer photography services such as puppy shoots, individual dog shoots, and full kennel shoots. You can see examples of each on any and all Bull in a China Shop social media pages. You can also see an in-depth look into my life and the American Bully lifestyle with my vlog found on the YouTube channel as well. Bull in a China Shop TV is also the home of the Bull in a China Shop podcast, a real, raw, uncut podcast dedicated to the bull breeds and the American Bully lifestyle. You can find all episodes of the Bull in a China Shop podcast, stud features, kennel features, event features, and all of the vlogs on youtube.com forward slash bull na china shop tv check it out and hit subscribe today Yo, you beautiful motherfuckers. Listen, we're doing a little something different tonight. We're doing a little late night Saturday, Sweet Life Saturday edition of the Bull in a China Shop podcast. Now, if you can't see it, but what's happening right now is we got a mobile studio, professional studio lights, the whole thing, new cameras to video the podcast, the whole thing, donated by... A gentleman that doesn't want to be named. He will just be forever referred to as my back pocket. Uh, thank you, sir, for the donations. It's kind of taking shit to the next level. It's changed as far as like lighting and and getting being able to get videos. And everything it's changed the game, changed my game. So, Does, do you think this makes us look like twenty pounds lighter? I don't. I don't know. I, if, hope. I don't know about lighter, but I know that thinner. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping. I know that no matter what happens, if there's light in front of my face, there's going to look like there's a huge ball spot right here in my beard, and I can't do anything about that, so you're new welcome. New stock on there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to spray Vetrosin on there twice a day, <laughs> see if I can get the, the hair to grow, but um, I actually got to test these lights out in California, S Southern California this last weekend. Um, I got invited out there by Big Kev from the lounge. Um, also, Rob Lee, they, they're doing a collaboration. You guys have all seen a couple of hint drops by now from those two. I can't wait to hear about this. But they're doing a, a big collaboration where, um, you know, a couple of bitches, a couple of studs, a couple of breedings. I don't know all the details, but it's going to be a big a big thing. I mean, if you think about, like, if you look at the, the beginning of American Bullies, the, the collaboration is really what created mm -hmm. the different shit, the new stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, old school uh, gaudy line stuff or gray line stuff had to be outcrossed with Razor's Edge, you know, to add what they didn't, what they didn't have and try to, you know, open up the, open up the genetics a little bit. So these big collaborations have kind of built the foundation of the breed and people kind of stopped doing that shit until... Rob and I kind of started bringing it back there a few years ago with the Bistro and Cleo mm -hmm. breeding. So I'm not saying that I'm not taking all the credit because Rob's been doing collaborations and pup backs for a long time. He's kind of like ahead of his ahead of our time. I mean, not really because that's how it used to be. That's how people used to build programs was, you know, working with other big programs to improve. Mm -hmm. So I'm not taking all the credit, but. We're definitely setting trends out here. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's a lot of a lot of new TV channels too. <laughs> a lot of which I think is awesome. Um, I'm not going to take all the credit for that either, but I'm taking some of it. I mean, a big chunk of that. Some, uh, but at the same time, it'll be good for everybody because a lot of these things are in different 
different parts of the world. You know, uh, Johnny Nerva is doing some travel vlogs over there in the Philippines, judging. Um, you got UK Bully TV now in, in England that's going to be covering a bunch of stuff in the UK on all bull breeds like we do, so that'll be good. Um, I, I'm hoping Rob Lee's doing the, his podcast now, which we, him and I just did. Um, it's episode two of the Bully Market Show while I was out there. He's got, he's got like legit microphone stands that like put the mm. microphone right in your face, hovering over your, like it's, it's professional cool. out there. I actually forgot my iPad this time even. So <laughs> this is just a video and then we're going to turn the audio into a podcast. Anyway. It's kind of like a collab. It's kind of, yeah, we're, we're just, we're kind of winging it because we wanted to test out these, these, these lights, lights at night. And I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, these are nice. They're but really so nice. anyway, so we I flew out to Cali Thursday, and you know just kind of relaxed after after the flight. I actually tried to find a place that would sell me medication out mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. No, no, zero places. No. Even mm-hmm. even though it's recreational now, mm-hmm. it's you have to have a Cali license. So Mister Mister Kansas license over here. Could not buy anything. Bummer. Mm. Huge bummer. Wow. Huge, huge bummer. But then Friday, um, Kev and the lounge guys, they rented this big, like a big mansion, like a $5 million home up in, mm. the, up in the hills. Nice. So we, you know, we had some adult beverages. And we did a couple of, we did a podcast. I did a podcast with Zeb Brooks. Zeb is the bully talk with Zeb's Pits. He does the video interviews and stuff online. Zeb's been doing this a while. A long time. He's got like 10,000 subscribers on mm-hmm. YouTube, so the channel is quite a bit bigger than mine already. So hopefully some of that will carry over. If you guys are watching from Bully Talk with Zeb's Pits, thanks for hanging out. But no, So we did a podcast with him, and then just kind of got a little bit drunk with the lounge guys, mm-hmm. and which I thought was kind of was. Really not really cool of Kev to invite me out. Um, Zeb's been doing this for a long time. I've only been doing it for like a year. So for him to want both of us there to document the collaboration and, you know, because it is, it is going to be a historic thing. Like some of the shit they're going to be doing together is going to be a big deal. So just to be able to be there to document that shit, you know, podcast, I did five podcasts out there, I think. So, which will be coming out the next four or five weeks. <clears throat> in between other podcasts that we're going to be doing because Nationals is coming up also. Yes, there's a lot going on. But I thought it was just like a super interesting trip. Like, I met a guy named Rodney from New Trojans. New Trojans, like, if if you have an American bully right now that mm-hmm. is bully, that does carry those crazy traits, I promise you New Trojans is behind it. Really? Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Cool. They're behind, like, everything. If you went, even Muggleson stuff, there's new Trojans. Really? Even, like... Then you met this guy. Yeah, all of Kev's stuff, we, we met him, and, like, he did a podcast with us, which was really cool because he's never even been interviewed before. So the first interview was Zeb and I. Um, I think mm-hmm. Zeb's video came out today. My, the podcast will come out in a couple weeks. So it's just, like... It was a crazy weekend because that's somebody that when I came into Bullies, that's some that program I was looking yeah. at, like dogs that I, w- I was looking at, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was just crazy. I, I, like, zoned out while he was talking, and I felt like I was standing, like, over in the yeah. corner watching the shit happen, even mm-hmm. though I was right there while it was happening. Crazy. That's cool. But only Where's because... time go, you know? It's only, it's like a, that was like my first, like, fanboy... I don't really do the fanboy thing, but mm-hmm. it was just like a, a dogs that, you know, he created dogs that, like there's a dog, uh, King Boom Boom, that he, that he produced off a, mo- a dog named Monster G. The bone that I have right now is a direct result of that King Boom Boom dog because that's, mm-hmm. I seen it, and I seen the bone, and I go, holy fuck, what is that? I want That's cool, like that. you got to go out and see that, all that stuff. So, yeah, it was dope. It was a cool trip. Mm-hmm. And I think um, maybe the end of November we're going to be making a similar trip to to England to document um, 
a bunch of big stuff coming it's up. It's really cool to get all this history now and, and still be able to go back and catch it and, and bring it forward. Yeah, fact, because, like... This is awesome. I would like to do it in other breeds, too. But mm-hmm. it's, it's like, super special because I'm into American Bullies like mm-hmm. that. So to, to see, you know, to meet people who are behind dogs that I, like, idolized. Because I don't really idolize mm-hmm. people, you know? Right. I feel like that's kind of... That's a waste of your time. Most of the time, mm-hmm. once you meet those people you idolize, you're not going to be <laughs> idolizing them, very, you know? Most of the time. But... The dogs, like I definitely idolized the guy's dogs, so it was it was awesome to hear him speak on some of the shit. And this was the very first up. time you got to see him and put hands on him, and this yeah, well, the very very. We didn't first see time. any dogs. We, he, okay. he came out to the to the house mm-hmm. to the mansion thing and did a just did a podcast with us. So he he made a trip from L.A. out there, which is like two hours, just to do a oh, podcast cool. and interview and stuff. I had a terrible week while you were gone. Horrible week. <laughs> while you were gone. How? What happened? Oh, my God. You know, first of all, I don't even remember what all happened. It was so bad. But Nancy Grace. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace. I see that. That was terrible. That was terrible. And you know what? I I had a bitch that was young. She was two and bred. And just just on the first due date, she's very drivey and very alpha. And so, you know, doesn't. She doesn't feel pain, I guess, like a normal dog. All over the place. Yeah. So she was still catching the ball and everything. And uh, she went to the bathroom, and um, her stool was black. Which, it was her stool, so, you know, it didn't concern me a whole lot. It, it, I thought, okay, we're getting ready to do something. Right. <clears throat> but then, um, I don't know, I just... That is weird, though, huh? It's weird, yeah. The, the black, more I thought about it, I thought... Stool? That's weird, so I called the vet, yes, yeah, so we took her in, and she was completely infected inside. And no sign of it, and her temperature was fine, everything. That's insane, Yeah, huh? no signs of labor, nothing, so lost the whole entire... We saved one puppy, but the rest were... No, it was just gross. Deteriorated bad. And Doc told me, you know, you'll be lucky to save her, so I brought her home. She passed the next morning, and it was very sad. And that then, sucks. You know, I had the puppy, and it passed a couple of days ago. Yeah, so did that. Yeah, that's like the that was opposite horrible. of my weekend. Yes, it only got worse too. Yeah, then. Oh, and then cherry bombs litter. Yeah. Cherry bombs litter bombed. Yeah, litter. I was so excited about, like, super excited about his repeat, and um, bad milk. That's not that's not something I deal with a whole lot. No, but I feel like that's uh, so. Uh, Suzette from from Australia had a. I learned a lot. Though. I think she hit you up about. Mm-hmm. I, she asked me, and then I sent her to you about mm-hmm. the like po- bad milk coming out yeah. of a mom. We we've, we've everybody's dealt with it, but it's not super common. You yeah, know? I've coached a lot of people through it. Never really had it. Well, I have had it, but not for not for years. So, you know, the reason I didn't think maybe it was because the puppies weren't that fussy. Right. And they just, you know. So that, that sucks. Was, yeah, it really sucked. So I lost that whole. That's life. dog life right there. Yeah. So, you know, even on Facebook, maybe we don't talk about it. It looks great on Facebook. Remember, it's nobody gets this 100% all the time. Yeah, there's shit going on behind the scenes. Like when I got back, I mean, I had a amazing weekend, but then when mm-hmm. I got back, um, my old, the oldest dog that I had, Rain, was like, I don't know what was going on. Had like some kind of crazy infection. I think got into his bones, oh, and he just, I within two days was like, you know what that walking might have been? around. I mean, he acted kind of shitty, but walking around to not he couldn't even walk in you know, two days. I've heard of that with a couple other things in. Um, you, you maybe wouldn't think of this at the time. Were his teeth okay? Sometimes when they break a tooth, they go septic so quickly like that. And yeah, I guess I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and it's fatal usually if you don't. Well, yeah, anytime there, yeah. there's infection in your bloodstream, mm-hmm. you know, you're, he's... He yeah, but I mean, you may not think fucked. of a tooth. Right. You know, if you don't see it, maybe they broke one. Well, they say even, like, you know, your dental hygiene affects your right. health a lot or whatever, so it makes sense. But, yeah, so 
Well, I mean, it wasn't 48 hours probably. He was, like, not even walking. So, you know, that, that was rough, too, because he's, like, the first. I mean, he's the, the base of everything. Without him, I doubt I'm, you know, I, pro- I might be here through a different route, but it wouldn't be the same for sure. So it's like, it's just the dog life. It you know? is, it is. It, it sucks so bad. But then but then you're mm-hmm. three days before that, I was in California enjoying the mm-hmm. the trip, you know, that also mm-hmm. the dog life brought, you know. Every time I've been out of the country and added a flag to my arm and all, like, those are all the high points. But without the shitty days like those, like we're talking about, those high points maybe weren't, aren't as, aren't as high. Because I know those low days are fucking low, for sure. Yeah. That, yes. that was rough. Um, I'll tell you what else was rough. Waking up the next day, walking out to the kennels, no. and he's not there. Mm-hmm. Cleaning cleaning kennels. I clean, I've i been cleaning kennels for nine years, and that dog's been in the kennel. I know. Or in the yard and somewhere. You know, I usually let him out when I clean. It was well, weird. That was like the weirdest part the next day. I was just like, mm-hmm. wow, this is so different. And, mm-hmm. you know, Mega left. Mm-hmm. Uh, Red Rose left. That 80-pound yeah, uh, Steven or, <laughs> or, or, or Cleopatra's son I, I had uh, went to Canada. So everything that oh, I had cool. over yeah. like 17 inches tall is gone. So wow. I don't have anything. Like everything is... It, the whole yard looks way more consistent now because of those those right, right. bigger dogs sure. aren't out there anymore. I'm sure. Which Rain Rain could uh, I mean I'd have fed him in another five oh, years yeah. if he wanted to go, you know. But it was just like two two weeks ago he's running around the yard with all the young dogs, mm-hmm. and then I get back from Cali within 48 hours he it was almost like he was paralyzed. It was weird. The vet like and he was like, well, I mean I could tell you what I think it is, but without a whole bunch of tests, I yeah. can't tell you exactly. So I said, you know, let's do, let's do the test that you think, you know, mm-hmm. let's do what you think uh, we should do. And, you know, once he tested, once he got, I can't even remember exactly what the test was, but once he got this test back and he was like, there's infection in his blood, it doesn't matter how the infection got there now, the infection right. in his blood, the chances of us Pulling him right. out of this or slim to none, you know? Yeah. So. That's what he said about Nancy, too. He said, you'll be lucky. But, you know, my yard's, like, boring. You know, she had to live here because she's so drivey and rambunctious and led aerobics at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> crazy. The morning. Insane crazy, but. Well, the name, like, Nancy Grace, she almost, like, had to be. Yeah, she was born that way. A little bit crazy. <laughs> Actually, like it's, mouthy yeah. and Blue wrong Rivers all the time. Instigating bitch, <laughs> aka Nancy Grace, because it started when she could walk. Yeah, we'll miss Nancy. That sucks. Yeah, so then we had to um, we had to move the dogs around at the kennel, and when you have a kennel, you know, it's like a Rubik's cube. How you have to put this thing together. Yeah. Yeah, because this dog stirs up this dog, and this dog, yeah. Can't. I'm just going through like it now, this too, one with and, all the moving around yeah. that we've done. I'm literally just dealing with that shit since I've been home from Cali. Yeah, so right now the whole yard has been shuffled. And they're riled up. They, yeah. The new pairings always rile people mm-hmm. up. Like, I just had a, a brother-sister that are only nine months old, but the brother will... And she's not even in heat. He will not stop humping her. Oh, yeah. So they can't be in the kennel together. Mm-hmm. They just can't be. I don't know what it is about her... Because other two other younger females, he's been fine with, but whatever it is about her, he just won't leave She's her alone. No. I don't no. understand. No. I don't get it. So you know, I've been dealing with that too. It's like, like you're saying, it's like a Rubik's group. Everything has yeah. to. You have to get everything just right, so shit don't pop off left and right. Mm-hmm. Especially when you've got the numbers like that, you know. Yeah. So that's that's really stressful. That drives me crazy. You know, because I I get it all arranged. Then I leave for five minutes. And I'm like, oh, God, what could have happened? I got to go back and check. So, yeah, we're on day three now. Hopefully it's getting good. close, getting close to settled in. Mm-hmm. Um, what, uh, what have you been doing as far as, like, with the, the feeding? Have you changed any of the feeding? How has mm-hmm. the new watering system oh, going? Oh, my God, the watering system. Because if... 
we I don't know if we talked about it yet. I think we maybe talked about it last time we did a, a Sweet Life Saturday two weeks ago. Really? Uh, the kennel got revamped. The whole yes, the whole Blue River oh, setup and the got revamped. Was here while you were gone to the add to my lovely week. That's it's never fun. Inspector. <laughs> That's never fun. <laughs> But so the whole kennel got revamped and water system, automatic water mm-hmm. system got put in inside and outside. Yeah, we've had buckets for years and, you know, chopped ice in the winter, which I've always complained about. Hated Sucks that. so bad. But if I leave it inside, the, my dogs love to play in it. Right. So, so they'll be freezing cold, they'll be wet yeah, and then running out in snow. Wet. Yeah, so. And hypothermia. We revamped the kennel. We have a new watering system that's awesome. Do you and like it? I love it. Are they like? I was really concerned if the, if they would get enough to drink. Yeah, that because, was my big question. Yeah, I'm kind of a freak about that. Cause what what's it called? A licksit? A licksit. Yeah. It so they like lick a, it. Some sort of that sounds like a dixit. It Let's does, be honest, gotta, like that sounds like the words the word dick should be in there. And yeah. it's like so it's like a like a like a hamster thing, right? Like a gerbil. It's like a huge water gerbil thing. So it's it's just a fucking ball bearing that. Yeah. Plugs the hole and then they lick the ball bearing to get the water. It's and the water comes out and I fucking thought. Fucking insane. Yeah, I thought it would be. Because I've seen like uh, on dairy farms, I've seen them where they have the bowl mm-hmm. with the little push button in there. Mm-hmm. Or even like a sensor where if the if the water level gets too low, mm-hmm. it'll automatically fill it back up. I, but they were, both of them had bowls. i never seen one that had the. Right. Well, these it, are really cool. They um. The Dixits. Yeah. We put them on the outside of the kennel, so you know they can't just chew, chew them the up. pipes up. Yeah, and they're they're metal, so I think they're pretty sturdy. But um, yes, it's great. I don't um, see when you have a kennel license, um, your buckets have to be you know, impeccable. Well, what did the inspector say? The last time she was here, I used plastic buckets because we go through them buckets quickly, no matter what kind we use. You know, somebody's like, well, you stainless steel, same thing happens. So, last time she was here, um, the dogs had put a tooth mark in the edge. And so, that wasn't flying with her. So she wanted me to have two sets of buckets at all times. So I'd have a new set of buckets at all times. Well, my dogs put teeth marks in them in a day, in 20 minutes. So that wasn't working for me <laughs> at all. <laughs> so now we have a system. Um... But um, what I wanted to say about this was, you know, everybody's a breeder. I'm a breeder. I'm a breeder. I'm a big, badass breeder. But how many have a license? I mean, how many are all the way real? Because this license thing is kind of a pain in the ass, but it's necessary. The inspector thing like that's, so, that's well, stressful. That's what we call stressful. It is stressful because, you know, you have to have your stuff up to par all the time and they can... Just randomly check. So and uh, digging right in the side of my face. Yeah, because I had tooth marks in the bucket. She was coming back. but Was it like a hole or just like a no, dent? No, no, like no. a tooth dent? Yeah, it's like a, jag- a jagged dent from, you know, a bulldog chewing on the side of it. Like So it wasn't you know, even a hole? No. You know the beds. Oh, my I have, God. I have, the little per- I have the little Pergo beds because one inspector said they needed beds, so I got, I got the Pergo beds. Well... If you know bulldogs, you know. They were destroyed in about seven they days. They had chew marks on them. So she suggested that I sand the beds. Does this lady have a bulldog? Because she needs one. She wanted me to sand the beds. Sand the beds every day. Sand like, them. I have time to go sand a like bed. With a, with a, a yeah, sand, like with a sand bed. Yeah, sand a bed. Yeah, sand the tooth marks out. So... No, no beds. The beds are gone. I would probably, yeah. I would probably. So, you know, it's just, it's, sometimes it's hard when it's bulldogs. You know, their urine's like muriatic acid. Yeah. You can't have any rust anywhere. Not even one little spot as big as this pen. I was just telling somebody that today, like, the, the pressure treated deck boards that, that we use, mm-hmm. they don't, they hold up against the piss no problem. The galvanized kennels. Yeah. It eats it yeah. eats them. It eats them like yeah. fucking salt. Did you see the on doors car. on my kennels? The doors. Mm-mm. Those are still not one year old yet. And where their paw where they put their paw every day? Just gone. Gone. 
they won't they won't be one year old until the end of next month. Insane. They, yeah, and it's it's just they they piss on the, on the panel in between each other because they're like marking. competing males and they're marking. So that that mm-hmm. panel in between the two mm-hmm. kennels every time is just and it's destroyed. the same place. It's the same place. Unbelievable. Yeah. But it's it's just it's just interesting. You I know, just finally had to, to replace compare other breeds. I just finally had to replace two igloos. I had Did a, you? A eight or a nine year old igloo and an eight year old igloo that was li- literally completely chewed like they chewed all the way back to where it's not even a dome anymore. It's just like a an open open sided fucking like they they put a skylight in basically right in the side. <laughs> they did a little remodeling. So yeah. and that was like in in because once they get that thick on the igloos, the edges are super thick so they don't chew them. Once they get through that, it's easy. It's thin as fuck so they go right through it. I actually just threw mine away this weekend too. And, but uh, nine years I had that one. That's an investment. This or not. One hundred and twenty dollars for nine years. That's the yeah. fuck yeah. Well, would you buy another igloo today? I, I wouldn't just buy, did. I, I, you did? Just two today. I love them for the winter anymore. because I have outside stuff still. Well, if I had check st- out my little dog house stuff little inside, the metal, then I wouldn't. The and metal I ones, the insulated ones. Yes. Yeah, in fact. Those are so nice. Yeah, those fact. Are nice. But yeah, listen to this. This was kind of crazy. Uh, the igloo. I put it out by the curb. I just slid it over by the garbage can. I didn't really think that the garbage man would take the igloo. Oh, they'll take, they take everything. They took the whole igloo. They took a whole fucking couch at my oh, house one time. they did? Oh, okay, we I didn't know a, they did that. I no, thought I was, like, breaking the law. We just set a my couch out there, out there. Just because, like, it was like a, we were done with it. We were going to take it to the dump or whatever. Uh-huh. Friday come, couch was gone. I'm like, well, what in the fuck? How did they even do that? Stratton was here, and he didn't know that I did that. So when they took the igloo. Here he comes, Grandma. The trash man just stole your doghouse. <laughs> Busted. So, little, you, little you, watchdog. speaking of Stratton, you said you had a, he picked out a book. Oh, this was great. Yes. To read today. He spent the night with me like he does. and uh, Listen to this shit. This he always wants to kid. read these books. So, you know, this morning I was really tired and I wasn't really into reading a book, so he got one himself. Went in my office and just grabs a book. This is what he grabs. What is it? The complete book of dog breeding. Yeah, what every three-year-old should be reading. And not Dr. Seuss. Not yeah. uh, some sort of coloring book. Not a fucking pop-up circus thing, whatever you call it. It's not Curious George. The complete book of dog breeding. Yeah, so this is a three-year-old. So we were talking about type the other day. I was... I was ranting and raving about type, and, you know, sometimes we make things harder than it is. So, the kid, okay, where's the, where's the husky? I don't know what page he was on. Right, so this, so this three-year-old kid sees this, this dog right here. This. Instantly says, that's a husky. That's a husky. There's, there's a couple reasons why he says this is. This is a husky. I said, how do you know it's not a bulldog? This is a three-year-old. And he said, because it has a white, mean face and a fat, curly tail. That's fucking That's amazing to me. Yeah. Hey, I know judges that work That's for tight. some of these small registries that yeah. wouldn't know that. Mm-hmm. So. Three years old. Three I, actually, it's a Malamute, but still, yeah, it's that's pretty Malamute. fucking close. That's pretty close to a husky. That's, that's pretty like, you know, fucking close for a three-year-old. Yeah, so that was the fact that he the, the tail thing to me is yeah, is so interesting. He noticed like and that's so that's what type first is. one of the first things that he sees is mm-hmm. that tail, and he knows it's different. I know. I thought he would say long hair. Didn't even care. I thought he would say a long nose. Doesn't even care. No. He white mean, face. Yeah, a white mean face. That's expression. That's exact. That's exactly <laughs> expression. That is, that in the tail. That's is how the silhouette. It is to type. That's part of the silhouette. Yeah. All this part of the silhouette. So expression and silhouette. Uh, they're the first two fucking things on the list for a reason. Yeah. This is a three-year-old that's seen that. Uh huh. 
That's but really, insane. Go go get a, maybe not a three year old, but go get a, a child that's been in school and ask him to show you the bulldog. Really, no, this kid is a, a savant, some sort of dog <sighs> savant. You don't want you yeah, don't want to start comparing your kids to this kid. Poor He's kid. like some sort of dog Poor savant. Kid. I'm telling you. He's going to be he's, judging dogs by the time he's nine years old. He's going to yeah. be nine. Mm-hmm. He decided today he's going to be a handler. Now, he's big enough. He can handle. Yeah. He's just gonna, well, well, does he know that his grandma does not really dig junior handlers at all? <laughs> You'll be so, competing against the grown-ups, Bubby. Yeah, so we might skip that part. But, I don't know. I mean, let's, let's, let's seriously think about that. Like, think about that. The first two things that this, this three-year-old notices... Are the expression on the dog's face mm-hmm. and the silhouette? I mean, the tail, but that's part. That's he, he can see the tail because it's part of the silhouette. Yeah, on a bulldog, the there is no tail. He knows that there's a difference, so he knows that that's a different breed. Now, how the fuck he knew that was a husky or even close to a husky? That blows my well, mind. Well, I, I have an explanation for that too. He's um, heard the word husky before. Well, remember when we talked about faults and the. You know, when you don't see a fault, and then you go to a dog show, and your dog doesn't win, and then they point this fault out, and all of a sudden it's just glaring in your face, and you didn't see it on the way down. Yep. Okay, you never forget that, as long as it's, like, traumatizing kind of to you. Well, when he was really little... Makes sense. Yeah, when he was really little, there's a husky that lives back here, and it, like he says, woofed at him. (laughs) So, (laughs) it traumatized him. And he's Jesus. I just oh. snuck. I just got like a yawn <laughs> attack. I just had coffee. Yeah. I just got attacked by a yawn. Anyway. Mm. But anyway, that's why I remembered it. You know, it stuck. So. So he knows what a husky looks like. Yeah, he knows what a husky is because you know scared him when he was little. So. You know, kind of like when we see a. When we're made aware of a fall, you know, you're just sick, all the way home from Alabama, or wherever you've been to the dog <laughs> show. And you didn't but, even know it on the way down. You were going to kill it. But that's like a, uh, I feel like that's like a primal instinctive thing. Like he got scared. Mm-hmm. So he recognizes that yes. now for the rest of his yeah. life as like that's danger. Uh-huh, that's danger. a mean face. <laughs> that's a mean face. That's a yeah. white mean face mm-hmm. with a with a big furry tail. Yeah. And you know, sometimes when I think when we're learning it's dogs. It's fucking insane. I think if we would take it all the way back to this simple stuff. For the foundation? I know, this it sounds is, crazy. No, no, this is something I say all the fucking time. Take like, it back to the simple stuff. It's not that hard. Yeah. But why we don't we make get the basics harder. down and then mm-hmm. start worrying about these tiny things? Why not get an entire breed mm-hmm. that looks like the breed yeah. and then start worrying about whether they got a kink in their fucking tail or they got an underbite? Mm-hmm. Like, let's worry about the stuff that actually makes them look like Think American of, bullies or yeah. makes them look like shorty bulls or makes them look like Frenchies mm-hmm. and then we'll worry about whether they got a little easy westy feet when we get a whole right. breed that looks the fucking same. Right, right, I right, say that right. shit all the time. And People think I'm crazy. Oh, he's he's saying that you should get you should sacrifice structure so they look no. bully. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is <laughs> why the fuck are we worried about a dog that's got an extra toenail if it doesn't even look like the breed it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If we're if you're if you're talking about American bullies and you're still breeding perfect terriers, I don't give a fuck. That's not an American bully. It's a terrier. This, this so is, I don't care. This this, is, if you're breeding shorty bulls, if you if you're in the shorty bulls and you're breeding sixteen inch, fifty pound dogs, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's not the breed. Right. Doesn't matter what they look like. They could be perfect. Doesn't matter. That's not the breed. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I thought of a new term, too, while we were talking about this. And you this wrote is, it. She actually wrote it. Listen, down. this is my term. This is so when this gets coined, because I think our community is somewhat guilty of this now. What is it? Exaggerated penalty. What do you think that refers to? Well, I think people get certain things stuck in their brain where they it's mm-hmm. the worst possible thing. Exaggerated penalty. Yes, and. I think that uh, we think so highly of some people, and I think that their penalties, I mean, like, are more, you know, if um, so-and-so has a dog that this is his first time out, 
you know, and he's very supportive and this, that, and the other. Great dude, and, but he's got a really poor quality show dog. So he's new, you know, but, so, he's, yeah, but he's he sucks new. dick. So he might get a little bit of a pass, you know, like, it's his first show, you know, come on, man, give him a break. Oh, even though his okay. dog's walking on the yeah. fucking past turns. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, with, you but know, But then you no bring type. a dog in. I bring, my dog has one extra hair by its <laughs> Your over. dog's got a black, I'm a out. black speck on the yeah. inside of its eyelid. Yeah, exaggerated penalty. It's bullshit. It is straight up. That's a real thing, though. Bullshit. That's but, for sure a real thing. Yeah, and I think if we would get everybody back to the basics and everybody on the same page... So that when it's taught, it's taught the same. Right. It's passed down the same. I think that would help us greatly. But I think we got to, I think that is going to help us get to a point where the breed looks similar. So then we can start narrowing down these little tiny, these faults. Yeah. Like, okay, you got, you got five American bullies in your ring. And they all look like they're American bullies. Now you can start picking apart their mm -hmm. their eye set. Now you can start picking apart their top lines. Now you can start picking apart their fucking toes. You know what I'm saying? Now the now yeah. the tail might matter because there's five of them in there right now. We have five dogs in the ring. There's two American bullies, and the other ones are pretenders. You know, I wonder if any shorty bulls too. I see shorty oh, bulls yeah, all the yeah, time yeah. that look like Frenchies with yeah. their ears cropped all yeah. the time. All the time. I wonder if anybody played cards because we. The problem lies, it seems to me, in which fault trumps which fault. But don't you think it's like a personal preference thing too? Like which fault to that person trumps a, another fault somewhat, to that person? But. I think major faults are major faults. Yeah, for sure. And and minor faults and cosmetic flaws. And then the preference, I think, is this this big. I mean, preference needs to come into play when we have 60 fucking dogs that look alike. Really. You know? I'll be about 97. Mm -hmm. I'll be about 97 by the time these people understand. We need to get an entire breed... That actually looks like a breed instead of five different breeds all being yeah. called the same thing. Right. And it's hard to do, but when you think back, did you guys talk about any any of that when you were out there? Like how it used to be? or Yeah, these motherfuckers didn't want no kind of terrier traits whatsoever. Right. They didn't want narrow heads at all. They didn't mm -hmm. want wedgy muzzles at all. They didn't want fine bone at all. Mm -hmm. We're talking 1990. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want this shit. But right now, for some reason, we have false prophets preaching from soapboxes, preaching shit that they don't practice themselves, breeding terrier-ass dogs that don't look anything like an American bully, but then chastising other people because they are, are breeding dogs that look like bullies but have a couple of flaws. Okay, it's, right, it's like, what? Let me explain how do we this get people on the same page if we got these fucks pushing, the, pushing a different message? Like, how are we ever going to get This tells on people right here. Now, this is a podcast that I'm probably going to get in a little bit of <laughs> spanky spank for, but I don't give a shit. We got some I. new listeners, Jane. We got okay. new people watching. Listen, it's not the same thing happening in American Bulldogs. And it all speaks to inexperience. That's what it speaks to, okay? What was this formed from? We didn't fit anywhere. We didn't with American Bulldogs either. Okay, so we make our own group. Okay? We want those bully things. Just this group of people that don't fit, and you know, we're trying to start a breed. We're trying to get together for shows. We're trying to do all these things. So we go with what we like, and what do we like? We like bully. So what? What wins first? Great big heads, right? The huge bones. Huge bones. Great big heads. Nobody looks at anything else. Head and shoulders at first. above the rest. Now, now this this should set an example of how people learn confirmation. First thing you look at is what you're drawn to. What makes you turn your head? A big head does. Big bone. Right, and we got to... That's cool. We all like that. We got to take into consideration that the judges yeah. weren't judges. I know. They're right. random motherfuckers they were random off people the too. street. So, it was all cool. So, big heads won. Everybody was cool for a little while. And then, somebody read a book or something. <laughs> came to the show. Their dog lost. And what they start talking about? Confirmation. Well... 
It may have the biggest head, but did you see its feet? Like, no, nobody gave a shit about its feet until you just said that right now. Yeah, facts. So now everybody's going to go home and get a book, and we're going to read about confirmation, and we're going to read this, that, and the other. And now we're going to start looking at easty, westy feet, and what else? Straight stifles and cowhawks. Those are the three mains. Yeah. We ain't going to give a shit about top line yet or anything. We'll see if the tail's too short and if the nose is too long. Okay, so that's cool for a little bit, just like that's big a, heads. That's a really accurate assessment, I feel like. Yeah. That's just, like fucking on point, left yeah. to right. I mean, especially the, you know, then, you, then you're looking at them like, the is the is the nose too long? We don't want that. Is the tail short? We don't want that. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the right? rest of the dog, we, we don't, don't even, even care. care. Yeah. So. And that's pretty much what this, what Rodney was saying is, if it didn't. If it wasn't bully and it didn't go, we yeah. didn't even want it. So it had Simple. to be bully and it had to go. Mm -hmm. Well, and here's oh. how we got to the Terriers. Because it happened in, a, in a, a Bulldogs, American Bulldogs too. So, confirmation was cool. That was cool. When nobody knew shit but Easty, Westy, Straight, Stifle, Cowhawks, Big Head, Big Bone. <laughs> then, then what happened? Another guy didn't win. And he went back to the book and now what do you read about? Movement. So, what happens then? Everything, we're going to look at everything's movement. And guess what? The shit with that moves like a fucking greyhound ain't built like a bulldog. No. But it takes a little while to get that figured out when you just read the book. So then, everything, it's terrier, tell guess what? These are bully people. Well, it used we to be care. bully people. Like, that's one other, th one other thing that these guys were saying is... A lot of this, at one, people breeding for money, and two, people actually losing mm -hmm. all the bully traits that they mm -hmm. worked hard to get. They, that's two of the biggest reasons why they just step away. A lot of these, a lot of these OGs step away. But how do you lose? How do you lose bully traits if? Because you're not breeding for bully traits. But how do you not breed for bully traits if? You like bully dogs because but you're they going don't with like the bully dogs. They oh. like to have a pedigree that says American oh, okay. Bully on it, oh, so okay. they can be in oh, the okay. fucking in crowd. I'm, but they don't want there. bully dogs. They want a dog that can still run ten miles and fucking jump off a dock sixty feet. Oh, I That's tried not that. a bully Shorty dog. Bulls. Nobody cares about that. That's not a bully thing. dog. If your dog can run ten miles, it's not bully enough. It's not going to get fed at my house. I promise. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying okay. to be a dick. There's a there's a place and a purpose and a breed mm -hmm. for dogs that run ten miles. They're terriers for the most part. If we're talking about these kind and of dogs, a bull terrier, most most bully style bull terriers aren't even going to go ten fucking miles. And if if we're getting to this this conversation here, this brings me to another point. So, if you want a dog to run ten miles, if that's your goal, really and truly, that's what you want. And you're going to st stand here and tell me looks don't matter and all that jazz. I want a dog that runs ten miles. Why aren't you going to go get a greyhound? Yeah, or. Yeah. Why are you going to try to make this dog any kind of lurcher run 10 miles? Any kind of lurcher breed. But I did that myself, you know, with Shorty Bulls. I did that, and I thought it, I was so into proving its worth, that, and I didn't want it to be a designer dog. I thought that was a horrible, you know, term right. at the time. Now, now, I mean, is it a designer? I like to call it a novelty. I thought that sounded better. But I, think, I don't well, know if it does or like not, a, but people have like 10 a miles, negative... Nobody cares about... 10 miles and going to get a little shorty. If they want 10 miles, it's There's not a shorty bull they're going to get. There's breeds that's, for that. Yeah. You, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have a dog that's 15 inches tall that weighs 75 pounds and expect that dog to run 10 miles. It's just not going to fucking happen. But these are things that when we look at, you know, what, what we call our issues today, there's a lot of psychology behind that that... Um, I think we need to take into consideration, but it takes a while to see this. And I've been through this with also, three different breeds. We're so, also fighting uphill because we've got these, mm -hmm. these, like I said, these false prophets, these people that, mm -hmm. that new people look up to, mm -hmm. standing on a soapbox, preaching hypocrisy, breeding terrier dogs, talking shit about people who breed real bully mm -hmm. dogs. Like, that's not going to get us to where we want to be for sure. I mean, even if it don't, even if it's only seven people listening to these crazy fucks, mm -hmm. there's still 
Seven people turns into 14 because they tell, <laughs> you know, they each tell one, two people. 14 people turns into 28 people. 28 people t- now turns into 56 people. And then we've got 112 people. A month later, now we've got 100 people on this bandwagon of terrier dogs. Because these people have no idea what the fucking breed's really supposed to be. A, a head of judges for one of these other registries. A head of judges. A director of judges. Who loves to personally attack me. Who has no fucking clue what an American bully is supposed to look like. Preaches to people about American bully structure. And preaches to people about movement that's not even relevant to the American bully. And then when... It doesn't matter really. But what I'm saying is we can't have these people who are in these respected positions... (coughs) You said a big word right there. Respected. 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 Spreading misinformation about it. We have a lack of that. I I truly believe that we have a lack of... Nowhere in these founders' minds, nowhere in these people that built the breed, (coughs) nowhere in their mind did they want a terrier-looking dog in any way. Yeah, because it was already there. They want it to be bully, and they want that shit Mm -hmm. to go. So, we, we same thing we say. Functional and bully. The same thing we say all the time. Bully and functional. Breed type... Includes functionality. You know what I'm saying? It's companion breed. Doesn't mean it needs to run 10 miles, but it ought to be able to run up five steps into your house. And you know what I'm saying? And the the other thing that I say that we're we're missing here is, you know, it's hard to understand that until you've had a few dogs. Now, if you just have tunnel vision, this is the only breed you've seen. What and, and what are you comparing it to? You know, right? That's you, that's you need true. to go out. You can learn from all different breeds. Go watch a Malinois work. You know. You don't even have go to go watch. anywhere now. You don't. You can go right online and watch yeah. videos from AKC shows mm-hmm. or UKC shows mm-hmm. or ABKC shows. But I, I just feel like people don't do enough. I took that for granted for so long. You know, I thought that, I thought that people were as intrigued as I am about dogs and why they do the things they do and. You know, how a dog thinks and why it moves the way it does and why does an English bulldog roll and yada, yada, yada. But but I really don't believe they are. You know, and no, how could really they be? How could so. they be until they've seen it or, you know. But this is like, you know, going back to when we went to England the first time. Mm-hmm. That's all I wanted to do was learn something different because American bullies were like, right. it's the only thing I'd seen at the time. You know, the only kind of world I've been mm-hmm. into and going to that, that bulldog show where it was like nine was different trip, kind huh? of bulldogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like crazy eye opening. Was it really? Crazy. Yeah. Just that's because good. I didn't realize like that's when I started seeing the breed type like argument kind of yeah. rolling through my head. Well, mm-hmm. there's nine different kind of bulldogs here, but I can only really see three different kinds of dogs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was good for you to Why come in with those eyes. Why the fuck they all look the same if, yeah. if there's nine breeds? Like, how is this? Uh-huh. What's different about yeah. them? Yeah. And then I say this. How many dogs and how many years and what does it take to make a breed, really? I feel really strongly about this because, you know, I did it. And But what do you what do? You do? What do you call it when you're halfway there? You're still going to call it a work in progress. I mean, you can't continue to call it a work in progress. You know, you're on yeah, your so, way. Yeah, at some but, point it's gonna get deemed it's gonna get dubbed mm-hmm. a breed before it's actually a breed. Mm-hmm. Like you have to. Because like you you're saying, to. you can't just keep calling them adorables yeah. for the next fifteen and, years. I mean I'm I can't wait. I hope it's in my lifetime that a shorty bull they don't say, Well, what's what's in a shorty bull? I mean, do you say that about a Rottweiler? No. Do you say that about a husky? That's just a Rottweiler. Yeah, That's just I husky. went for that day. But you know, I told my people, you guys gotta you know, quit referring to it like that. You know, you have to quit referring to it. You have to, we have to say it's a breed. Believe right. it's a breed. Start talking like it's a breed. Yeah, it's a Make it a breed. Bull. It's not a, no. it's not an English and a Frenchie. It's a fucking yeah. shorty bull. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It's just, it's been an interesting interesting journey but to see um three different 
three different, I call them man-made breeds, go through the same set of, it's like milestones of growth, really, is what it's like. Yeah, it's crazy. And, uh-huh. And I know that a lot of folks think they come up with, you know, new, fresh ideas, and they may be fresh and new for for the group, but yeah, it's, it's maybe been fresh tried. And, it's fresh I'm and telling new to you. you because you yeah. don't have any concept of the fucking real world or yes. the big picture. Yeah. It's crazy. Do you think that do you think that shorty bulls and American bullies are similar as far as the timeline? I think the shorty bulls as far as development in the breed, I think the shorty bulls are probably a little a little f- more well, consistent, a little further along. I think I think the only reason that they are, see, the bullies have us beat in numbers. Yeah, for By sure numbers. Far. For sure numbers. Now imagine if I could have started Shorty Bulls with a hundred dogs that I chose myself. You know, a hundred dogs that were breeding age the first year. I mean, can you imagine how far we'd be? But we we weren't able to do that. We're small. But I think I right because those guys at the mm-hmm. beginning were were taking whole litters oh. and, and co-owning the whole thing out, and then taking mm-hmm. those whole litters and keeping them and breeding big. them. So within like five years, it the population mm-hmm. went crazy, just boom. Yeah. Whereas, like, you kept you kept a lot more control. But I think as far as, like, a consistency yeah. level, the shorty bulls are, are a little bit... But, I mean, you have to remember, that was my third thing I did. It wasn't my first. I wasn't new. I was already old and But that's set. just you. We have so many fucking people. It's, like, crazy to me what, how, how it's, like, not progressing as far as consistency... Like, yeah. the, the really good dogs are really good. You know what blows my mind? It but just, the rest of them are, like, yeah. just not there. You know what are I'm you saying? Talk, which breed are you talking about? Uh, bullies. Oh, yeah. Like, the, the top yeah. ten mm-hmm. are really nice dogs. Mm-hmm. But then after that, it's like... Well, of course it is. I mean, even in our little population, it's like that. But I don't know if people realize certain things. I mean, I am still, as always, the largest producer of shorty bulls and people ask me why i feel so strongly about this breed i mean it's been my life my my baby and all that okay it's kind of dissipating (laughs) like i'm ready for the kid to graduate and i'm ready to fucking retire and (laughs) go on the cruise motherfucker yeah i'm like where's everybody at yeah who's gonna do it i don't know but there is a lot of people but i mean that are trying to carry the torch though there are and i and i appreciate that but what happens when there's... Four or five dogs. Oh, I'm getting not... ready to flip my yard. I don't know if people have been paying attention or not, but um, I'm going to flip the whole yard again. I've done this a couple times, and it's it's really exciting. You can only do it when you have a lot of dogs to do this with, and it's probably going to be the last time I do it, but when you flip a whole yard, do a whole bunch of breedings, you get, you're almost to where you want to be, and then you really concentrate. It's like, you know... Two feet on the gas in the last round. It's all you got in you. You're getting good stuff. Yeah, I'm. I'm ready to retire. A bunch of dogs. And just grow this new stuff up. And then, I mean, it's it's not gonna go back. So I'm I'm flipping my yard right now. Yeah, yeah. Flipping the whole. I'm literally just waiting for young stuff to grow right now. Right. I just moved mm-hmm. all the stuff over three years old out, and there's nothing there mm-hmm. over, like, the yeah. oldest dog's two and a half. Other than, Isn't that exciting? Other than Cleo. Other than Cleo. I shouldn't say that. Other than Cleo. Mm-hmm. My show's the oldest dog. So That's exciting. Everything is young and growing mm-hmm. and frustrating. It is, but it's... Frustrating. Man, I am going to enjoy this so much. Like, I am... But I want to see what, I like, I have, like, post today. nine females, young females coming up. And yeah. I just can't see which ones produce and what they produce yeah, and what yeah. litters we get. Because, you know, they're all going to Maestro or Loki or Bus Jr. or Cletus. Like, I've mm-hmm. got four studs that we're just going to, the next two years, I really don't even have to go anywhere. That's awesome. Off the yard. It's just going to be all four of those produced studs. When I get all the way done, I don't know if you saw my post the other day or not, but, I mean, before I get all the way done gonna have a little stud farm yes the that's what i'm saying are gonna be out fuck females with somebody fuck puppies yeah well i will ship semen I three love times puppies. a day i love it but i just i just want to do that to i see would if much I do rather that. ship semen yeah. deal with studs 
bleeding females I mean, and screaming puppies. If I could avoid that, that would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not selling any more studs. I have 12 studs. No females, no studs. I'm not selling anything. Mm-hmm. I literally, I had a guy come today and was looking. He was like, is anything for sale out here? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I know. I mean, I would... If the obviously if the price was right, if somebody's talking twenty thousand, twenty five thousand, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll find something. But right now, no, I know we're mm-hmm. it's like like you're saying the yard just got flipped. We're waiting for the young stuff to grow, and we're going to produce. Well, I'm so excited! I can't wait. The next level. This is my biggest bangers. flip ever, and I cannot wait. So I'm how so many? Excited. Like who? What older dogs are you talking about? Like is Shiner well, on the block? Is she old and retired no, yet? No, Shiner's not even old yet. Shiner's not Shiner's even old. Shiner, Shiner looks Shiner's like a fucking kind of special white gorilla. She looks like the abominable snow. Shiner out is there. exactly what happened to me. Okay, I was a size six when I got married, and every litter <laughs> her, to here, her, and it doesn't go away. Her body's insane. She's awesome. Yeah. Oh, uh, I know. But Ramp's I just out love there. Shiner. Ramp is old, old man. How is Ramp still alive? He's got to be sixteen. <laughs> no, he's not sixteen. I don't know. I have to go look. Like conspiracy. I think theory. he's like ten or eleven. Rampage is 17 I just checked old. his semen, and it's fantastic. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. And he's like a farm, like a, mm-hmm. a, a kennel farm, like but he hard doesn't. animal. But 10 he's, years old, pounding yeah. semen. It's completely fine. Mm-hmm. I'm going to breed him to the new stuff. That's what I'm so excited about. And then... Like, what's... Okay, so what's the goal behind and that? Listen to I this. noticed a lot of the new stuff is, like, a little smaller. So I'm, are you trying to add a little more yeah, size smaller. back to him? Listen, the reason I said 15 inches in my standard at first was to give me a little room to play. You know, 15 inches. That's standard size for a lot of the breeds, so. That's, and that's a big short. You see a 15 inch short. You know, and I, shorty, I wanted to put the standard shorty. out there so it didn't have to change and change and change and change. So I thought it was a good idea to say 15, even though I didn't really want 15. But if, this is, this is one thing that I don't know if people realize. If you have a tendency to breed the bigger end of shorty bulls, if you breed a, you know, a 15 to a 15, you get 15-inch pups, you grow them up, you breed to 15 to 15, yeah, you're not really getting smaller. You're getting bigger. So. If they stay at 15? If they stay at 15, it's fine. But what you're saying, the likelihood. But I was at a show this summer. You're going to get some over I was at a show 15. this summer that I was judging, and, um, this is no shit. I the doll I saw a doll coming across the the field and I thought, hmm, that's kind of a neat dog and you know, it was a big dog. It was a shorty out of standard, I found out. Um, when I asked the guy what it was. So, there's a creator of your breed asking. Yeah. Yo, that's pretty embarrassing. Last year at a show I judged a sixteen inch shorty bull. I'm not joking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was fucking huge. Okay, well, that's not my fault. Huge. Not my fault. No, you but know? what I'm but, saying is, like, you're saying if you're breeding two, well, 15 to 15, you, the likelihood of you staying 15 or under, you're probably going to get some stuff, maybe one or two that's over. You're yeah. going to get some stuff out of standard. Yeah, if you, if you keep, you know, big to big to big to big to big to big. Right, 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 right. You know, and I don't think, I don't think you want to go, you know, huge to tiny because then you're inconsistent. You know, so it has to be a slow, gradual gradual thing but another thing I want to say is you know every time a shorty does something you know if your shorty shits too close to the house <laughs> not my fault okay <laughs> but I get the blame for that yo Dave Wilson just put a video up about the same shit did he it's like everything that happens to Dave Casey is not my fault right it's not my fault so but that's how mm-hmm. people perceive it You're you created it I have six toenails instead of five. That's your fault. Hey, man, I had a guy holler that his bitch had one extra nipple on one side. Is that genetic? That's what I want to know. Winning. That's a W, sir. That's an extra puppy (laughs) getting fed. I think that's special. That's a W. That's an extra puppy getting fed right there. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I had something else to say, and I, I forgot what it was. Anyway... I'm I'm done with this. I'm actually yawning, even though I just had coffee. 
So we're gonna. So I bored you. We're gonna wrap this up. No, no. I th actually think that, especially the Stratton thing, that's crazy. The fact that he could see type in a fucking book at three years old by the expression oh. and the silhouette that blows my fucking mind. One more thing before you go. You know when we're talking about this education, we're talking about starting on the same page with the with the structure and. We also need to start, we need to make this like nursing school. Okay, we need an issues class, we need a foundations of dog breeding class. We also need a universal procedures class. We need to teach people, I'm sending you a billion sperm. Your bitch is, has seven eggs ready, okay? Those kind of things. Right. That, w that would help us greatly. I think, so they could be passed down to the next generation. I think 2018, given. you and I do some educational seminars. Mm -hmm. Some live stuff. I mean, obviously we can record it too, but maybe some live. Let, let us know Hands what you guys think. Stuff. If, you guys, if you think that's a good idea, if you would attend something like that, mm -hmm. leave me a comment, shoot me a message. I think we should put on some breed type whelping Breeding in general, mm -hmm. some some seminars in 2018. I think we should put a little maybe a tour together. Hit like five shows or something. We can do like a Friday seminar. Mm -hmm. You everybody comes into town Friday night. We could you know do it at like 6 p.m. or something, so we could still get fucked up afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know one thing about one thing about us. I'm I'm writing a book, and so you know I've looked at a, a few books. Oh uh, no big deal. I'm writing, writing a book. A book. Just gonna write a book. Writing a book. Well, you know I like to write. <laughs> read Facebook, you know I write. So, anyway, they paint this great big, pretty picture about, you know, so you want to be a breeder and this is what you need to know and nobody tells it real. And then you go over here and it's the PETA people that hate our guts. Fur moms. Yeah, they commonly known as so fur moms. Negative, but nobody tells it realistically. So. I feel like that's kind of my duty. I'm, you know, I got one foot out the door and one on a banana peel <laughs> in this shit. So, we could do this. I could get really, really real. No, and I think that's a good And idea. you won't read it in a book. Now, something like that, we would probably have to charge these motherfuckers money. Oh, definitely. But that's mm -hmm. only to cover the whatever cost the room would be yeah. to rent and travel for us to get there. And I think we could do something like we a... We can even bash some of my dogs. You want to tear up some dogs? We could do that. It's not even... I mean, we could just use... Oh, I mean, listen. But see, the thing is... People if we can use, learn from that. If we use pictures of dogs, <laughs> we don't have to show the whole fucking dog. Oh, no, we're talking I want about stinky, the top line. Stinky, cut the stinky, stinky while they're doing it. Real. You want to get real? We're getting all the way real. Anyway, you can find her, Jamie Sweet, on Facebook. You can find all my stuff, Bull in the China Shop TV. Bull N A China Shop TV on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. If you like us, leave a like. If you want to say something, leave a comment. Let us know if you would attend an educational seminar mm -hmm. put on by Jamie Sweet and Ty Lumley. I mean, that's like 30 fucking years of having puppies experience. And then between the yeah. two of us, maybe 40 years judging, because I got like mm -hmm. three and she's got like. 37. But I mean, I'm talking like education, like the real. The yeah, real, real The deal, real like, stuff. Like, Not the happy. Let me just read you a page out of this. Let's just see how this starts. No, no. Just, just one time. You got to say that for the seminar. You're about to give it to them for free. We're going to make them pay for it. No, that. mine's going to be different than this. The goal of this book is to provide practical, usable information. <laughs> Bull in a China Shop TV on YouTube. Jamie it's Sweet. It's going to be practical. Uh, Shorty Bulls, what, what is it? Shorty Bull something on on Instagram. I know you know it. I know you fucking know this. No, it's probably Shorty Bulls at the river. Something. I don't know, river. It's, it's on Instagram. Look her up. Just type in Jamie Sweet. Her shit will come up, I promise. There's another Jamie Sweet. Bull in the China Shop TV. Bull in the China Shop podcast, the first and only podcast dedicated to the bull breeds and the American bully lifestyle. I'll see you motherfuckers next week. I've actually already recorded next week's episode. It is going to be from the Cali trip. Kevin Benford, Big Joker, another OG Lounge member, 
Anthony McLynn, Zeb Brooks, and myself a little lounge house party round table. So we'll see you guys Wednesday. I think that was a Wednesday. That's coming out Wednesday. We're out.